Hello everyone, I cordially welcome you all to another video from the Python tutorial series and in this video we are going to learn about memory management in Python. So before we start, I have a small request. We have been recently observing that many of our lovely audience have not subscribed to our channel yet. So I will cordially request all my lovely viewers to please subscribe to our channel as that will highly motivate us to bring more videos in future. And in case you have already subscribed, then without any delay, let's get started. What is memory management? Memory management is an indispensable part of any programming language. Knowledge of memory management is important to create any fast, scalable and memory efficient application. Memory allocation and deallocation in a proper way is very important from the software developer's point of view. So now you might be asking that hey, what is the meaning of memory allocation and deallocation? So memory allocation means reserving a block of space in the computer memory for a program. And by memory deallocation we mean freeing up the memory space from the computer memory, okay? So proper allocation and deallocation of memory is very important to make an efficient application. With the arrival of the concepts like big data and data analytics, building memory efficient application is a need in the current situation. Poor memory management may lead to data leak, loss of data, slowing of application and a lot of time consumption in debugging and testing, okay? So as responsible software developers, it is our duty to code applications which are not only time efficient but also memory efficient. And to code memory efficient application, we need to learn about memory management in Python. Okay? Now, we are going to see how this memory management works in Python. Memory management in Python is done by the Python memory manager. This is a very important interview question. Sometimes you might be asked that how memory management works in Python or what thing or what software controls memory management. So then you should answer that memory management in Python is done by this Python memory manager, okay? When we speak about the memory allocation, we actually speak about two types of memory allocation. That is static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. So if you don't know what is static and dynamic memory allocations are, so by static memory allocation, we mean memory is allocated in the compile time. And when we talk about dynamic memory allocation, we mean memory is allocated during run time, okay? And I have also attached a note here, Python solely depends on dynamic memory allocation for allocation of memory space in the computer memory. Okay. So this is also very important that Python solely depends on dynamic memory allocation. Okay. And if you want to know about some programming languages where static memory allocation is used, you must be already aware with C and C++. In those programming languages, static memory allocation is also highly used. Let's go to the next slide. So now we have seen about memory allocation, what are the types of memory allocation and how Python is dependent on the memory allocation. But now we come to the deallocation part. So how does deallocation works in Python? So to understand how deallocation works in Python, you need to learn about two concepts. One among them is garbage collection and the other one among them is reference counting. So now let's learn about garbage collection. Garbage collection is a method by which memory deallocation takes place in Python. When no reference to an object exists, the virtual machine assumes that block of memory is no longer needed and thus it calls for the garbage collector to delete the object and free up the memory space from the heap memory to reclaim it. So now you might be thinking that if garbage collector basically cleans up the memory, then the memory is basically reclaimed. So what is the benefit we have? Because we have huge memory installed in our own PCs. Yes, you are correct. But when you write a Python application, it is very much important to use memory very efficiently. Otherwise, in the process of long run, what will happen? Your application will basically slow down. And if you want to avoid it, you must code your Python application in a very efficient manner. So this continuous allocation and deallocation of memory is actually what keeps Python going and makes it fast. Okay. So how garbage collection basically assumes that that block of memory needs to be freed. So that thing is basically taken care of by the reference counting. So 
So now let's learn about reference counting. The work of reference counter is to count the number of time an object is referred in the system. When any reference to that object is removed, the value of the reference counter is decremented. When the reference counter value for any object which is zero, the object is assumed to be no longer needed and thus the memory is deallocated. And I hope by now you have understood how reference counting and garbage collection works hand in hand to basically deallocate unused block of memory. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now when we are talking about memory in Python, we also need to learn what are the different types of memory which are used in Python. So in Python we use stack memory and heap memory. So now let's learn about both of them. Stack memory. This kind of memory allocation occurs in contiguous blocks of memory. It generally stores method calls and references in our code. In this case, the size of the memory to be allocated is known to the compiler and thus the variables within the function method are stored in the function call stack. When a method is invoked, it is added to our program's call stack. Okay. Inside that function, when a variable is instantiated, it is temporarily stored on the function's call stack. After the method returns, the temporary variables are deleted and the call stack moves to the next task. Okay. So this is one important thing which you must learn about Python that how stack memory is useful in Python. Okay. Now let's proceed and also explore the heap memory. This memory finds its use when the instructions written by the programmers executes. The heap memory has nothing to do with the heap data structure. We just call this a heap memory as it is a huge pile of memory which is available for use by continuous allocation or deallocation. The variables which are not supposed to be function scoped or method scoped and thus must be available globally are stored in the heap memory. So this is also a very important interview question where you might be asked that if a variable is to be function scoped, where that variable is stored or if a variable needs to be globally scoped, where does that variable is stored? So for variables which are function scoped or method scoped, they are stored in stack memory. And those variables which are needed to be available globally are basically stored in the heap memory. Okay, let's proceed. So now we have come to the last topic for today's video. Now in this part, we will learn that how we can write memory efficient application in Python. The first point reads, use inbuilt functions from libraries when available and allowed to use rather than writing your own code. So this is a practice which I always encourage. When you have some libraries which does certain tasks, please don't reinvent the wheel. The reason is the code which is available in the Python library and the ready to use are basically unit tested and also highly efficient. Okay, but it may be possible that your own functions might not be so efficient and also for certain corner cases, your function can stop working. Okay, I am though not discouraging you, but this is a fact. Point number two reads, use predefined methods of the different data structure rather than finding some way around. So in our previous videos where I have taught you about the main four data structure, that is list, tuple, set and dictionary, I always taught you about the inbuilt methods. Okay, so those inbuilt methods are actually very efficient and can do a task very quickly. So I also encourage that you don't write any code which actually does some way around for any given data structure. Point number three reads, make proper use of generators. So if you don't need an iterable upfront, always use generators. They are time efficient and memory efficient as well. Point number four reads, don't use plus operator for strings. Basically what I mean here is, don't use plus operator for string concatenation. Use the methods available, okay? Point number five reads, assign a function to a local variable. So if you have watched our previous videos, I always encourage this. The last but not the least is avoid unnecessary use of nested loops when not needed. Now this is the very, very important point. If you are aware about data structures and if you have any idea about time complexity, you know the more nested the loops are, the more time it will take to run the code. So always write code which have only one for loop or maximum two. Don't increase the nesting. 
okay so if your nesting increase not only the program will take more time to run but also to some extent it will not be memory efficient as well okay so i hope the topics of this videos are clear with you we discussed about what is memory management why memory management is important how allocation and deallocation works what are the different types of memory in use we discussed the two different types of memories and lastly we discussed in brief about how we can write memory efficient code in python so in case if you are not clear with the concepts i will post the link of our blog in the description section below you can go and check it out i hope you found this video informative in case you like the video feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as that will highly motivate us to bring more videos in future for any queries doubts suggestions or feedbacks feel free to post them in the comment section we are going to reply so thank you for now see you in the next video bye